Please big, give a big round of applause for Dimitar Sauv from Startup Masters. Welcome on stage. Whoa. Work. There we go. All right. Can you hear me, everyone? All right. I'll assume that you can hear me since nobody's saying no. Um, so uh, today I'll be talking about um, some of the new advertising formats in Facebook, but um, I'm a kind of guy that makes sure that everyone understands everything. So first we're going to go through a few very quick basics which might you might consider as pro tips and tricks. And uh, then we'll look at the um, advertising formats and a bit of what's going on in the future. Uh, my name is Dimitr Savov. I am the CEO of Startup Masters. Uh, we are a digital marketing agency um, and we deal with uh, everything from um, creating the idea for a project for a website to creating the websites and the marketing optimization and um, e-commerce development. So uh, we work under a very strict model for development. It's called uh, digital performance marketing where you uh, start with a, with a strategy for a business, then you think how you're gonna present it, form a technical solution, uh, make the design materials, promote, analyze, optimize, and you go through that cycle all over again, um, constantly throughout your life cycle until um, you conquer the world. Um, but we haven't done that yet. Um, then um, I'm speaking in front of you today because um, I, um, developed myself um, a framework for the analysis and optimization of online stores. And uh, those who are lucky enough uh, to speak Bulgarian uh, can see it in a lecture we did it at the Software University. And for the others, you're just gonna have to contact me and I'll send you some materials about it. It's a 30 point system for analyzing uh, 30 of the most important aspects of an online store. Uh, from uh, beginning from the hosting and the hardware solutions, going through payments, uh, shipping, and all the, the different problems that an e-commerce store uh, is going to have. And um, we, so far, we haven't seen an e-commerce business that hasn't had these problems. So this one, um, this might be something interesting for you. So now let's go back to uh, the Facebook idea. First thing uh, that we consider the most important thing in Facebook is the actual content. Um, content on Facebook is different than, uh, than other types of content because people actually, um, um, because of Facebook's algorithm actually is different um, because people actually need to interact with the content and they need to engage with it for a content to be successful on Facebook. Uh, for example, you can have a blog and write a very useful article there and that's, that's really different. People don't need to actually interact with it to, to make it uh, successful if it's very, very useful. And so uh, regarding viral content, I didn't invent this. There is the steps framework. Uh, some, anyone know the steps framework? All right, we'll take a close look at it just, just for a few minutes. Uh, so the steps framework uh, describes the six uh, most um, common ways uh, for most common reasons for people to share uh, some kind of content, which is what in turn makes it successful on Facebook. The first one is social currency. This is the idea of giving the people information that other people don't have so that they will share it. So for example, uh, Beyonce did this with her last album. She released it on Twitter and uh, the whole world knew about it in less than a day. Um, emotional uh, triggers are the second thing that makes uh, people share and interact with content. This is uh, basically the idea of presenting content at the right time, like uh, sending people a picture of uh, coffee and Kit Kat in the morning, so that every morning they, when they think about coffee, they think about Kit Kat, and um, this is what actually increased the sales of Kit Kat about 50%. Emotional content is um, thinking um, is the idea of playing with the emotions of people, and there's actually two types of emotions you can check this whole thing is a big research it has a book behind it and everything so we are, we are not going to pay that much attention to it but emotional content is about uh, how you can trigger emotions in people and anger and envy are for example one of the most active you know there's like being sad is an emotion as well but it doesn't make it so actionable people don't act on their sadness they go in their bed and eat ice cream 
Um, so the public principle is like monkey see, monkey do. So you can show uh, how your um, how your how other people are using your product, and you can design your products and try and show the ways that people are using it, so that people will buy it more. Apple does this. Apple began this with the white headphones. Um, they were the first ones to actually release white headphones. Before that, all, all the headphones were black. And so people st started looking, all oh, right, these guys have white headphones, why? And they started talking about it, and this is how they got um, their success, um, especially for the headphones. And um, the practical value is actually doing something, uh, some research and providing some actually valuable information for people, and telling stories uh, are just one of the other engaging things. So when you think about content, you should choose one of these strategies and basically go on from there. So let's say that you have an e-commerce store and um, you know how to create your content. There is somebody to create the actual content. And now you need to set up your Facebook um, infrastructure, so to speak. Um, the important thing here is that you need to go professional. Just creating a page, um, making a post, and boosting it for $5 is not what you're going for. Um, so Facebook has created this thing called Facebook Business Manager. It allows you to um, put all your pages there and um, all your people or your staff that's going to be interacting with the pages, all the editors, the people who prepare the content. You can put your advertising accounts and you will see later on product feeds, all the pixels and the tracking information that you need. So it really, if you want to do business on Facebook, you start here. Um, the, um, the things that you can do on Facebook Business Manager, some of them I already mentioned. Manage your all the pages, people and accounts that you have. Uh, it has some features for advertising agencies. So if you are an agency, you cannot avoid Facebook Business Manager or it would be really difficult for you. Um, then um, you can manage multiple accounts from there and often a single business has many Facebook pages. For example, if you sell in 30 countries, you're going to have a German page, an uh, Italian page, a French page and so on. Uh, you can manage all your pixels, payment methods and um, your different audiences that you want to collect later on and you will see all that. So here we are talking about the advanced stuff, so this is the basics and I'm skipping most of it. So. I'm sorry if you're not that familiar with it, but we wanted to go a little bit uh, high level today. Uh, the next thing, if you want to go professionally advertising anything on Facebook, uh, you never just, you never ever use the ads manager to create adverts because Facebook Power Editor is just ultimately better. Um, it's better because all the new features available in Adverts Manager. Um, all the new features that Facebook has for advertising come first to Power Editor. So, and it changes literally on a daily basis. Tomorrow there could be new features in Power Editor that Facebook hasn't even released the news for yet, and, and uh, it's possible that they're there. Um, so, you should use the Power Editor in Chrome because, uh, you know, it. It's optimized for Chrome and um, you can lose a lot of important campaign information there. So it, it has all the, uh, the features and it has a superior workflow to those of you who are familiar with AdWords, it's kind of like AdWords editor. So it helps you uh, make multiple campaigns and, uh, and massive amounts of ad groups and uh, ad sets and adverts. It has those bulk features that we need and it has enhanced optimization options. You can actually do better advertisements with Power Editor. So this is the reason why on the professional level you never ever use Adverts Manager to create um, adverts. Uh, you use it only to view reports. And uh, it can also, the Power Editor can also be used without Business Manager. Some people confuse that, that it's not possible. So now, okay, we know how to do the technical stuff. And now we should think about marketing. How we should actually form our strategy and how do we think that we are going to sell? Where does Facebook come into our customer journeys? The first thing that you do when you think about modern digital marketing as we see it is that you start with a customer journey. You put a paper on the table and say, okay, my customers start from here. 
they don't know anything about me, and the first thing that they see is, for example, a branding campaign, then they can go to the website, they can bounce, then I can re-engage them on Facebook. You have to map all the points uh, for your customers. So this is usually, in the marketing sense, um, separated into a few phases. We start from um, awareness, where people um, are just understanding that your brand exists, uh, then they are thinking about it, thinking whether you are better than the competitions, they are doing comparisons and so on. Then they might go get a trial or test it, then they can buy, and after they buy, they would either like it or not. And if they don't, this is called churn, is the worst thing that can happen to your business. But um, if they do like it, they can become advocates uh, and can invite other people and can uh, help your business grow naturally and organically. So, where does Facebook come uh, throughout this cycle? The, que the question is very complicated because Facebook actually can work at many of these different levels. It can work for branding campaigns in the beginning, it can uh, work th th with dynamic remarketing later on, it can provide advocacy with people sharing what they bought. So Facebook is li really, literally everywhere um, except for the direct purchasing uh, phase where really it isn't at so far at the level of Google where you can just search something, find it and buy it directly. But um, they are also figuring out solutions for that. So you have your customer journey and you know from where to where you want to take your customers. And then what you want to do is with all that content ideas that you have, you should build a social agenda. This social agenda is um, the idea of preparing the content for a month strategically and um, putting it up in Facebook, scheduled to run at the right time to the right audiences that you want. And then you, you publish it and you just look at the reports. So in order for this to work, to be able to prepare the content for a month, for example, for five posts a day, uh, you need to prepare that pipeline. You need to have people writing the test, different people writing the images. You need to have some kind of system that you can do that uh, in a very quick and efficient way because actually it's a lot of work. It's a lot more work, for example, than Google AdWords or anything um, that I've personally encountered so far. So preparing that content is really a lot of work and to be able to do it in, in such a way, you need to kind of have a um, system for that. Another thing I wanted to mention um, before we get to the actual advertising is the so-called old thing, Edge Rank. Edge rank is, uh, if you remember, before, a few, a few years ago in 2010, everything that you post on Facebook, all of your friends see, and if you like a page, everything that they post, you see. So this, they didn't have any filter for bad um, stories and bad posts. They introduced Edge rank in 2010. Um, it was okay, it cut down a lot of the um, bad uh, f feed stories, but it didn't solve the problem. And actually now uh, the, the name stayed Edge Rank, but now they use a machine learning um, algorithm that um, takes, they claim to take 100,000 factors into account. I don't know, know how they do that, but um, the idea is that the, even if people like your page, they are not gonna see all your content, which means that if you create a genius post, I have 100,000 fans and you post it and only 2,000 people See it? That's really losing potential for the other 98,000 who could potentially see that content. It could be important for them, but uh, you didn't reach them. So for that matter, uh, it's very important to understand the Facebook's algorithm of showing the important stories on Facebook. And there's really, now it boils down, all these 100,000 factors boil down to one word, engagement. People need to interact with the content. They need to like it, they need to share it, they need to comment about it, and they need to um, have some impact about it. And the best way to go about this is to actually do um, connect yourself with some influencers and groups. For example, if you uh, sell, I don't know, clothes or shoes, you can connect with, uh, I don't know, fashion designers who talk about the shoes or somebody who is influential in that field and you can have like fashion groups, for example, I don't know, the group of the Bulgarian hot chicks, you know, where they can talk about their shoes. So um, 
this, for, for example, just to give you an actual practical example, we have the marketing group here in, um, in Bulgaria where we share different things and, and stories and we actually make funny videos for them quite often. Uh, and this is called, from groups, um, many people tend to interact with certain content and influencers have a lot of people following them so many people can interact with the content. So you should think about who are the first people who are going to spread your content and then you go. Um, regarding targeting, there's uh, uh, this is really basic, so I'm going to practically skip it. But you can target by location, language, age, gender, and so on, on on Facebook, which is important. But the latest new developments with the custom audiences and lookalike audiences we will discuss in detail later on. So this is what makes uh, Facebook different than the other um, display advertisers. So display advertising is the idea that you go to a website, see some content, and you can um, and people can advertise there. But Facebook changed the game with actually providing um, optimization for different kinds of objectives. So you can uh, have a campaign targeted to people engaging with your posts. Do you remember now the, the algorithm? If if more people, uh, if a bigger part of your audience engages with the actual posts, you can have a bigger impact with your natural posts and so advertising actually improves your natural standing in, in um, Facebook. And then you can actually go for clicks and conversions and actually go and have people go to your website, complete some kind of a purchase or a conversion, but this is not the strength of Facebook. Uh, views, again, you can show some ad and have people view them, this is good for branding. Again, not one of my favorites, but events. Facebook are the, are the best at this. There is no actual better way to, to promote events right now. Um, you can have you know, downloads of apps. This is one of the new ones which we'll discuss later on, reach and frequency, which they didn't have before and it's available only in Power Editor, where you can choose an audience, say people who live nearby, and you can say, okay, I have $1,000 and I want to reach a maximum of them, or I want every person to see my ad at least five times. Um, and the local listings is uh, the idea of targeting people based on where they are right now geographically, like GPS targeting. So people who are uh, in your neighborhood or who are just coming and they are, for example, from Spain and they just came here to Bulgaria. Um, and leads, of course, connect, getting people inf information and branding, promoting your brand. So now we covered the so-called basics and we get uh, to the new advertising formats. Of course, I'll skip the ones everyone knows and we will start with the local awareness ads. Um, local awareness ads are just those ads that we talked about now that you can choose who you are showing your ad to depending on where they are right now, uh, which is very important for several reasons and can bring you um, a lot of um, a lot of interesting options that you can do. For example, um, if you have an um, e-commerce store, but you also have um, an actual hardware, physical store where people can go. If somebody is near your store and you know that uh, they are already your customer, you can, for example, show them um, an, an ad saying, okay, right now near, we have a store near you and we, can, uh, and we have a sale or you are a customer special for us and we can give you a discount if you go to the store now. Um, so this is very cool, this idea of newcomers. It's very underused and people who use it, actually Facebook report, they have amazing results. Um, it can bring you uh, awareness about the people around you. So for example, if you are a restaurant, you can um, put the lunch menu in this kind of ads and people nearby you are going to receive it. Okay, here's the, the lunch menu for today. And um, very few people actually think of that. Um, you can also, um, these ads can also provide directions. So if somebody just, ca just came to Sofia, went to the center and is looking for something to eat because it's, uh, I don't know, eight o'clock in the, in the evening, you can provide them with directions to your place. And uh, it works really well instead of handing in brochures, you know? Instead of sending somebody to, to give papers to people, you can co connect to them directly on their phone, knowing that they ju just came nearby you. Um, very underestimated, but uh, I see a lot of potential here. Uh, the next thing is those carousel ads. Uh, it's the ones that you scroll to the right with your finger. Um, and when you reach the last one, you are actually sent to a page, which is their 
worst kind of um, factor. Because um, the, the idea of this is that you can present five or seven uh, different images with, with a small description, as you can see here. And uh, you can even have an action button. So for example, you can present several different products and, and have people go to the page, okay, I want this product specifically. And uh, you can, here's this is a good example from, uh, I think this is ray -Ban, but I'm not sure. Anyway. Um, and uh, they have headline description and a link to call to action. And Facebook can actually optimize the order. So for example, uh, if you can, let's say, that, take the example for the menu, uh, you can, um, present the menu with images and say, okay, today for the lunch menu, and you can use this in combination with lo local awareness. And so, for example, you can put, okay, this morning we have uh, Shopska salad and Tarator and all the good stuff, and uh, you can present them one by one and people can uh, choose them. Um, so the good examples and when to use the carousel ads, um, we generally think of them as featuring multiple products and linking to individual pages. This is how they started. This was the need that created the ads. But actually, uh, they could also be used to highlight the features of a single product. You can show several different pictures of a, of a single product or show what is the result of that product being used. So, for example, showing up a blender, then sh uh, showing up just the fruits, and then at the end, uh, showing up a smoothie or something. And um, you can tell a story or explain how something works and um, basically show your um, product in action. Another thing that people use it is just having one really long image coming about. Um, this kind of seems weird when you talk about it, but it's very engaging because people naturally just want to see the end of it. Uh, and it's very engaging and, and people actually uh, pay more attention to it that way. The next thing that we have is dynamic product ads. This is probably Facebook's best performer so far. Uh, you will see the enemy or the next best performer next. Um, the, product, the dynamic product ads are the idea that you can upload a um, feed of your products with images, descriptions, and links, and so on, uh, directly into Business Manager. And so, for example, let's say that you sell um, five different types of phones or shoes or a hundred different types. You can upload each one with a feed and um, then you can use that feed into advertisements. But in order for that to work, uh, you need to have a set of Facebook pixel uh, for which you create some um, special tracking. It's not just putting the, the Facebook pixel on every page. You need to actually put some actual pieces of code uh, into the different pages so that you can recognize some important events. And these are uh, what content has the user viewed, uh, what content has he added to cart and purchase. So just to not to lose anybody, we have somebody from Facebook coming from an ad to your website. And Facebook knows that they came from Facebook and they saw Thanks to the Facebook pixel, they know that they sold this product or this product or that category. And you can record this information in the Facebook pixel and then use it to make actual campaigns. And um, the most common events are viewed category, viewed product, added some product to cart and purchased and registered, of course. So what can we do with these things? I'm pretty sure you already read them, but... For example, to a person who has seen a category of shoes, let's say we have the um, group of the Bulgarian hot chicks and somebody from it is going to the website and looking for high heels. Um, we can show them different types of um, high heels uh, later on on Facebook. So they come to our website, they leave and they go back to Facebook and we can show them different products and, and see if they like anyone, one of it, um, one of them, sorry. And uh, then if they actually go in and see a specific product, pay, um, pay attention to it, you can even record, for example, how much time they spent on that page. So if, if a girl spends, I don't know, two, five, ten minutes on a single page with, I don't know, red high heels, she probably wants it and just doesn't have the money now or, or doesn't have a credit card to buy them. And um, you can 
uh, for example, when somebody's seen a product, you can show them a comparison and you can, for example, show them an ad to a page on your website that leads, okay, our products are you know, of a better quality, we provide better service, we provide longer warranty, we provide any kind of competition. This here is kind of your attempt to get them into the, uh, into the consideration phase and have them choose you instead of others. Uh, if they added something to cart, and abandoned the card uh, and didn't purchase, for example, you can send them a promotion code directly with dynamic remarketing. You show them the product that they choose. You sell them. You tell them this is your code, and uh, you can buy it now with 10% off. And this might be just what they need to um, to finish that sale. And uh, if they have registered on your website, you can send them a kind of a promotion to uh, invite a friend, get some freebies, you, you know, you are, get 15% off for your first purchase, for example. You can get as creative with this as possible. The events that Facebook can track with the Facebook pixel are more than 100. You can track pre basically whatever you want um, on your website and have some kind of campaigns figured out to this. This is the best fit for creating a good customer journey. You remember how you sat down on the table and put all the whole experience of the customer on a piece of paper? This is how you bring them from the beginning, from uh, them not knowing your brand, to them becoming your advocate. So obviously that's why they're, these kind of ads are the best performers in Facebook. And we go to the slideshow ads. Uh, these ads were created because in many, peop many places in the world, people have really, really bad internet. They're not like us here where we, we have not only good, but also very cheap internet. Um, many people use Facebook just on their phones with a 3G or even an edge connection. So these slideshow ads allow you to create a video presentation from a bunch of images that you have. And um, you can see, I don't know if that's, yeah, it's changing. So that, this is kind of a video, but it's very, very lightweight. So people can see it even on, on their Edge or 3G phones. So the, the key here with these ads is that they are, um, they have a very wide reach. For example, if you have an advertising campaign in um, South Africa or um, Rwanda or in, in some of the, you, you create like a local ad in, a, in a, some provincial city where the internet is bad, you should really go with those because they um, allow you, they can actually be seen. You know, other, other phones just won't load the video. They don't have such a good connection to load the video. And this is Facebook's solution to that. And um, it works very well on every, pretty much every device and in bad connection. So um, again, it's also ultimately better than just images. You know, having a sequence or a presentation is better than uh, showing just images. So. These ads get used quite often and they, they are as well quite new. This is actually my personal favorite and I think that this will be Facebook's top performer in the following years. The idea, the idea of lead generation ads. Um, if you have a form on your website where you need somebody to register, for example, you are BMW and you want people to register for um, test drive. They don't really need to go to your website you can just get the information, you can show them an ad, tell to them, okay, come get a test drive of our new BMW, uh, click here and you will get it. Uh, the idea is that you can present your form directly in Facebook and people with one click can say, okay, I, I confirm that I want to give this information to Facebook. And Facebook already has this information, so it's correct all the time. I'm pretty sure that uh, most of you who have uh, any kind of lead generation form on their website often receive uh, ASDF as a name and so on. People just don't give their actual information, the real phone, the real email, the real name. And this is actually very important for personalization and high level marketing that we're gonna just touch on at the later stage. So these forms, you can create any kind of form that you want or this is what Facebook claims. It's not actually possible, but they are very customizable and very flexible. And uh, they are very easy to complete. Facebook already has the information. People don't have to type anything. They just click one thing and uh, you have their information and you can actually put it in your CRM directly using the Facebook API. You can put it in your online store, create their account, 
for, without them having visited your website, and you can start marketing via email, uh, you can start remarketing to them, put them into custom audiences, and then uh, create a lookalike audience and, and make um, find more people like them. So actually, with, for example, finding 100 people that are, could be your potential uh, audience and that actually have showed interest in, in, and registered, creating lookalike audiences which expand and, and they just say, tell Facebook, okay, find me more people like this, um, you can um, have a great effect uh, with these ads. And uh, I believe that soon they will overtake the other ones as Facebook's top performer and Facebook really uh, innovated the field with them. So this is how they look, actually. Uh, for example, you have some marketing message, you promote whatever you want to promote and have a person subscribe. And uh, when they click the subscribe button, they will see um, a screen that shows them what information are you asking for. And they can say, okay, I confirmed that I want to give it to them, success, and that's it. And they stay on Facebook, they continue your journey. It's not a very disruptive experience for them, saying, okay, I want to, um, do you want to receive our magazine uh, once a week? Yeah, I want it. Click, it's done. Do you want to, to sign up for um, a test drive? Maybe that's a bit more intrusive, but if I really do, I can give the information. Um, Mazda did this, of course, for the, for the test drive. This used to be a GIF. And here I have a small screenshot about the information that you can ask. You can ask for email, full name, first name, addresses, cities, all the information basically that people can put in Facebook, you can ask for. And you can also put your custom fields. You can ask them, for, for example, for their grandmother's dog's name, whatever you want. Um, and this was um, one of the features that we were really excited about. You know, we were, because we are actually we make actual websites and we thought, all right, God, now we're going to make Canvas uh, things in Facebook and we're going to make so much money out of it that it's going to be the next big thing. Well, no. Uh, it turns out that Facebook did it so easy that everybody can just go in and set up their ad. So this is Facebook's response to landing pages. Instead of them sending you to, the, to a landing page, they send you to your Facebook pages Canvas that kind of presents of the whole experience. And here's just one example of how a person is browsing to, uh, to uh, Facebook canvas on mobile. These also work on desktop, but Facebook never show that. Here is another one. This was, uh, I think, the first one with the ship where you can go on a cruise and you can see uh, all the different places and so on. So this is a very good experience for the user in terms of um, in terms of presentation because they don't really need to leave Facebook. These things load really well and they work. I don't actually I haven't actually tested them so far, but they look really um, fancy. So how do they work? Um, we thought that they would be complicated and you can put your custom code there and so on. Turned out that you can't, but you have a header where you can, the idea is to put your logo. You can put different photos and videos which can be very long and people can scroll and actually you can um, create a very well custom design experience with those. Uh, you can put buttons which can um, do whatever you want. You know, can send people to your website for example so that they can book a ticket. Um, you can put different text areas, um, these carousel ads, and you can also uh, put product sets. For example, if you are a big, uh, say, clothing store, you can have multiple canvases. For example, you can have one canvas for dresses, one canvas for shoes. Uh, and in the canvas for dresses, people can actually see only the, the product set, uh, the products that you've imported, uh, for the dynamic ads, the same product catalog you can show in the canvas and they can see your products uh, with their pricing and everything inside of Facebook without leaving. And people actually like that. People don't want to open slowly loading websites and, and so on. And some websites even don't have a mobile version. So it, in terms of experience for the customer, it can be uh, often very well. And once they know your brand and engage a little bit with it, then it's, it's a good step for them to move and, and go um, to, to the next step, visit your website and so on. 
so these canvas pages uh, I'm really urge you to experiment with. They are really easy to create. We hoped that they, they would be harder so that you know we can get in on the action, but no. And um, so you can create them from your Facebook page or you can create one in Power Editor. So just when you start creating the ads, you will see now there is like a small square with a plus that you can say that I want this ad to lead to the to the canvas instead of, for example, for some action page. And now uh, these are the new things just before that because I don't know where in my presentation it is. Um, one thing that I missed here is that Facebook actually released a few days ago. I don't think that it works already in Bulgaria, but it works in the States and uh, Australia for sure. They released a new kind of objective um, that's not uh, having conversions or visits on your website, but actual uh, branding. And under branding, Facebook understand that people engage with your brand, like your page, visit it more, and so on. So they collect, they have a set of branding metrics that you can, that they can track. And they automatically optimize your advertising and show it to more to people who are most likely to be interested in, in the brand and engage with the brand. So this is something new. We don't know how it works. It was released about two days ago, but it's like targeting for, for conversions. I want to get more branding. This is what I want out of my campaign. And so it's, um, it's something new that you can try and experiment about, but you can't do it in Bulgaria yet. Maybe next week it should be here. Facebook are pretty quick with releasing those. I think we're running a lot of time, so if, if you can wrap it up. I have two more slides. Excellent. Um, so about the advanced concepts and pro tips, uh, this, the first thing is segmentation. Se uh, Facebook, when you create um, an advertisement on Facebook, it asks you, okay, what age, what gender, uh, what location, what languages, what interests, and so on. And if you put that, um, you get the problem of not being able to see whether women over 55 or under 55 are performing better. So the solution to this is creating actually a large number of ad sets and segmenting uh, them by each different uh, thing that you can. So for example, you will have uh, for an interest of uh, people who like, girls who like high heels, we can separate them by all the 10 different age groups and separate them by um, location and separate them by, um, I don't know, whatever. Uh, by all the different things that you can and you have a naming convention that you can put in place so that you know which ad set is which actually targeting option. So in, in Google, you can do the segmentation automatically. They, it's done, but Facebook just don't have it. And so this is how we do it there. Social agenda, I already mentioned. Um, developing stories and series. So the idea that you just don't post every morning coffee and, uh, and cats on, on Facebook, but actually try in your social agenda to strategically develop some kind of story for your brand. This brings a lot more engagement. and. Um, Another advanced thing is that people tend to use um, Facebook for social support and customer service. People can go on your page and ask a question there. And if you have 30 pages all over the world, you can have actually one software that rules them all and you can have a different management uh, of your pages on, on Facebook. So these are the tools that um, are kind of most famous. AdRoll is a um, platform that programmatically controls um, the advertisements on Facebook and provides some better options and better functionalities than Power Editor. So often it works really well and it's probably the first thing you should try. Uh, Buffer and Hootsuite are tools for preparing your social agenda and launching it over all of your social media accounts. Um, and um, they work really well. And then there's the enterprise platforms like Marketo and Salesforce, which provide amazing analytics uh, tell you what people are talking about. You can have different management permissions for your um, social um, customer service, and um, you could just check these out. I mean, the, the presentation is not about that. And the last thing that I want to say is actually what's coming up in the future. This is already almost already here. Uh, Salesforce have pretty much figured it out. This is the, the idea of a one-to-one -one customer experience. Having a personalized experience for every single user that comes to the website 
uh, and, and showing them uh, better content, dynamically generated and personalized for them. Amazon is doing this really well and they have great success with it. And so doing that dynamically is the, is the key. And this in turn leads to programmatic advertising, which is kind of the, the big thing. Creating your ads programmatically by just starting with the customer journey and having a, a technical team develop that story um, and, and have them uh, have the advertisements present themselves at the right time to the right users and so on programmatically. And also with an omnichannel. It doesn't matter if a person is on a desktop or on a mobile device or already or on their TV, you, you should be able to provide this omnichannel experience, which Facebook is uh, one of the great tools that it provides. I don't know if you have time for questions. We do have time for questions. That was really, really interesting. Um, all right, so let's, uh, before the next speaker, let's get a few questions uh, rolling. Yes, there is uh, one there. Here we go. Almost in time. Thank you. <clears throat> um, it's pretty easy. Huh? Such, such kind of activity. <laughs> um, I'm joking. So, how much does it cost a typical project with Fed, Facebook advertisement? Um, well, it's it, Facebook projects can, can become really big. So let's see how we can start. We start with somebody thinking about the content and the strategy and the customer journey. Okay, and from that we can okay you, John are gonna do the content. You, Chris, are gonna prepare the images, and this is how we we are gonna start. And you can start just naturally, and you can see different statistics and metrics for your post that you put without spending money for advertising. And the, the first step that you can do is kind of try and boost the best performing ones. But then when you see what performs and what doesn't, and, and when you have an actual strategy, you can get, okay, you now, um, Tony, are gonna do the advertising and you're gonna have and prepare the whole customer journey. You, you're gonna get a programmer then and have them set up the Facebook API so you can uh, interact and present that dynamic experience and programmatically show the, the correct ads to the people. So you can see that how including several people already gets uh, a bit expensive and when you put the budget, another thing that you should point out is that because there is no segmentation on Facebook, you have to try with all different age groups, all different genders and all different interests uh, and you can, you can have like a, I don't know, normally between 40 and 100 ad sets for just one idea that you have. And you have to spend at least, I don't know, five level or five dollars to try each ad set. And when you multiply that by 100, it's a, already a $500 budget for, um, for just figuring out if your idea is, is correct. To be able to statistically see if it works or not and for who it works and for who it doesn't. So testing on advertising on, on Facebook, they make try and see me to make it really cheap, but if you want to do it professional, if you want to get the actual statistics, it's a bit more tricky because you have to try a lot of things. So, and, and it involves a lot of people. So this is why I said it's hard. Okay, thank you, but can you give us a uh, price for, for your typical project? What is, what is the average amount for? Um, well, the way it usually works is we as a, uh, as a marketing agency, um, we take some part of the load. For example, we create the advertisements and the CEO of the company creates the customer journey and the strategy and some people from his company prepare the content. So it depends on what load can you take from your business and what uh, uh, part of this load do you want to outsource to, to other companies. Then it depends. We, For example, we charge per hour often. So. It depends on how many people you need, how many, um, I, I really can't give you like an exact number. Okay, okay, thank you. And last question, do you have uh, customers in Bulgaria? Um, I think we do. Do we have customers in Bulgaria? I think, yeah, uh, I mean, for, the, for social campaigns especially, no. But um, we, we do have some marketing campaigns in Bulgaria for some small clients. Okay, thank you. All oh, right. We do, we do, we do. Oh, sorry. One last question. Oh, okay, two last questions. So there's gonna be the lady in the back and this fine gentleman right here. There you go. 
Hi, my name is Ivan. Uh, so maybe you have customers in Bulgaria, but a few. Uh, so what is the average budget for a Facebook customer in a country like USA or UK? Um, and, and then if you have a customer in Bulgaria for Facebook advertising, what would be the average? Uh, what, uh, which channels would you recommend for an average budget of 500 euro? Which channels? Because if, if you say you have to test with 500 euros per day, nobody in this room should start such a test. Yeah. They, they rely uh -huh. that you already have the test made and you can focus on particular channels, which will be successful for those 500 yeah. euros. Well, for 500 euros, I really like recommend uh, investing it in uh, setting up your website really well and putting your stuff to work with actual organic content that you produce and going with organic uh, social and setting up your SEO and so on. I wouldn't recommend spending that budget for advertising if it's that low um, because or I mean you can try um, Google AdWords this would be the, the, the natural next step but for Facebook to really be able to, to do it in the right way as, as described here uh, you need to kind of be on some already functioning level you need to have sales you need to um, have some already working channels it's not the first thing to start advertising on Facebook I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend unless you are an event of course um, but um, it's it's a bit uh, tricksy and um, Facebook it works better on the a bit higher level uh, when you start and go and work for for example for branding goals which is something that a small store the small store needs to start selling in some way it's not the main focus is not on branding in the whole world knowing about us it's about a few people buying um, so I wouldn't go with, with Facebook with a, with a small budget. Um, I would go with the natural. You should certainly have a presence, a page, Facebook business manager, but you, you shouldn't throw money at Facebook. You can perhaps with a small budget boost the most successful posts that you have, but I wouldn't go with the strategic, statistical way of trying all the different segments that you can uh, and so on. But you, there's certainly stuff that you can do with a small budget even on Facebook. All right, then last question from the corner. Um, when it comes to Facebook uh, canvassing, which sort of content would you say is the most that people engage with? As in what sort of content would you recommend? It's my yeah, first question. Um, yep, I will answer it. So I think that on Facebook, people actually um, engage the most with emotional content. And by emotion content, I'll just give you a few quick examples. Uh, for example, uh, uh, many politicians uh, stole billions of dollars and euros. People get angry. This is an emotion. It's a high arousal emotion that makes people act. And they share, comment, and say, all right, what's this, and, and so on. Um, so I think that in this way, emotional content or something that's really funny and makes you feel uh, joyous, it's, it's a, again, this kind of emotional content I think is one of the best performance and um, if it's um, interesting or, um, you know, awesome, you can, um, you can have great effect with that. So I think that emotional content is the, the best performer of those, but you should look at the steps framework. And I completely agree with that, but my question was in particular about Facebook canvassing, as in what sort of content is the most compatible with the with sort of the program? So would you say more images, more content, as in wording, with Facebook canvas? Uh, we have, I, I can't tell you because we haven't actually experimented with it yet. It's in right, our okay. agenda, but <laughs> we don't know. Fair enough. <laughs> thanks. Well, thanks. All right, thank you so much. That was really, really, really interesting. And I gotta tell you, I love the design of the slides. So big kudos to your designer. Please give a big round of applause to Demeter again.